see you next. So you all, where's the microphone? Yeah, so it's working. Oh, okay. We'll come to you there, then the microphone's on this one. So if you've got a, a, or there is a band or a project that is has been cooking their stuff up in the studio, they've got a bit of a following. Do you think for a group or even just a band starting out, is there still any point in your view to them sort of chasing after labels, whether it be small, local, or kind of bigger things? Do you think is there still a role for record labels in that getting heard process? That's quite a big question, that one, because um, record deals these days, I mean, you have to keep in mind that whatever money you borrow from any company, they want it back, and normally with some more. So you have to really think, do I need this? Is what the, you know, they've got actually going to help my, my sort of project at, at this moment in time? So it can, it can involve making some sort of tough, tough choices. You know, I can give you an example. Um, we, we were offered a, a, a publishing deal for about £12,000 um, by, by BMG. But we were offered um, a much smaller publishing deal for about two thousand pounds by someone who was much more useful within the music industry. So we, we went for less money because you know the money has to just, just, just get paid back at some point. So you're actually taking a smaller loan for someone who has more skill and is more kind of in in that, that end of the music industry, which is going to be useful to you. So I think that's the thing to keep in mind is is that with deals, you know, any deal is they, they want the money back. You know, there's there, there's never a world where they just give you a load of cash and that and then say off you go. <laughs> you know, it's it's very much it's, it's just like uh, look at like a bank loan and that, that's where the business comes into it and it's fairly you know it's sort of important to be on top of that. You know. I, I think they do, I think it depends what you want in a way. You know, if you say say Universal, you know. They have got a lot of money that they can put behind you. You know, do you, do you who do you want to be? You know, if you're a prog rock band, you know, then you're not necessarily going to get offered a, a deal by a major label. Do you need it? I'm not sure you do. You know, I think a lot of what I say a lot of times to people is is about having control of your music. You know, once you go to a label, you're not just um, you're, you're giving up that control. You know, to a certain extent, and you don't necessarily need to anymore. You know, uh, to be honest, you're not especially with a major label. You're not going to get offered a deal unless you've got a certain amount of momentum behind you anyway, because they need to know that you're going to sell a certain amount of records. Otherwise, the maths for them just doesn't add up. You know, uh, so it kind of depends what you want. You know, people have proved that you can sell an awful lot of albums by self-releasing, um, and you can do that so easily now that I think, you know. Do you, do you, you know, there's, there's a saying there that, you know, whatever the first page of the contract gives you, the other pages take away, you know, kind of like what you're saying, it's a loan. So how much control do you want to have? How much are you willing to give up? What do you want back from the label? I think those are all uh, questions to ask. I mean, there's, there's, there is no single answer, is there? You know, if you ask Ed Sheeran, you know, would you give up all those millions? Then he'd, he'd say no. But you say, you know, what, what, what do you want? How much control do you want? It, it's, you know, but you've, I think there's there's lots of options now that don't involve um, going with the label at all, ever. So. <laughs> there's also the contract length. Um, if you get offered a contract, how long do they want to hold you in there for, for that amount of cash? So with, with the BMG deal, they, they wanted us until um, I think I would have been 95 by the time I was out of that deal. Which meant that, that anything, you know, if, if I'd sold 20 million records, 80% of that 20 million would have gone to BMG for, for the rest of my life. Whereas if I take, took a, sm a smaller deal just for a couple of years, then you know, if I you know, got to that size, then that cash would, would be mine. So it's really, that's why it's important to really look at the contracts you're getting offered. Don't be wooed by the cash amounts, because sometimes they can be quite heavy, they can be 20 grand, 30 grand, and it's really exciting to you know, sort of offer and you, you ban that amount. But you, you have to think, what am I going to get for that? And what do they want for that, more importantly? And so, you know, and be, be confident as well, you know, just these, these, these big um, you know, sort of labels, they, they don't control everything. There are still artists leaking up through indies, there's people just doing it on their own scene, so they're, they're, they're not the be-all and end-all. In fact, the deeper you get into it, the further away you get away from what actually wanting these deals, <laughs> which is you know, a strange phenomenon. So. Um, I was just going to uh, reiterate Andrew's point of, um, you know, you can do it all yourself. I mean, like a really good example is Stormzy. Um, he's, you know, a songwriter, and he's his own rights holder, so he gets everything. The sooner you, if you can, my advice is if you're DIYing it, doing it yourself, do it for as long as you can, because the more people that come in, the less your, the more your bank account's going to go down, 
I mean, I can manage her, they normally want 50, um, 20%, a record label, the, probably the best thing we're going to get is 50%. And as you said, it, it's for a long time. Um, so if you can do it yourself, I would advise that you do it. And you learn along the way. It doesn't matter about making mistakes because you learn not to do them again. And it makes you a better uh, musician, artist, and a business person. And you understand what your worth is as well. And that's really important not to sell yourself out. Yeah, I reiterate that as well. And also, I was interested in the language you used about um, chasing after. I don't think anyone should be chasing after a deal. I think they should be chasing after you when you're ready. Um, so I think you know you need to kind of build yourself up to that point. If necessary, build a, a team to work with you around your music, um, but hold on to as much as your intellectual copyright and you know your, your music as you can until such time as it's really worth your while to take that deal. Yeah, it has to be a really good deal for you to take, for you to kind of go down that road these days, I think. On the other hand, it's easier being on a label 